Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode in this series. Um, yeah, I'm actually doing something I've never done before in uh, starting a series, which I always say I'm going to do, but I've never done this. Um, and so this is episode two of the command tutorial series. There's going to be, I mean, there's going to be a lot of episodes, so just stay prepared for that. In this episode, though, we'll be covering um, game mode, teleport, and Slashville, all of the advanced parts of Slashville. Um, and then in the next video, we'll be talking solely about Slash Clone, because I was initially going to do that one in this video, but there's just a lot of stuff that you have to cover, and there's, I mean, so many different modes, like filter, replace, masked, forest move, all of these crazy, like, additional things and I just thought that would be better to talk about in another video or otherwise this video would be like 30 minutes long and you don't want to sit through that so um I'm gonna give you a lot of stuff that you can have fun with today and in this series uh the first thing we're gonna be covering is commands um so we're not gonna be getting into command blocks or functions or um even like resource packs and custom model data none of that we're not going to be doing that um immediately we will get into all of that crazy stuff and if you don't know what any of that meant then that is totally fine because we are getting into it but um we need to get through some of the basic commands first before we really move on to the more advanced stuff so that you can just get a hang of it like you can get the hang of it and be prepared when I start putting all of this stuff in command blocks and then it gets kind of confusing from there. Uh, and we'll be using functions mostly, but I'm going to be teaching using command blocks initially. Also, if you enjoy this video and if you enjoy any of the episodes um, in this series, or if you just enjoy the series and you want to support me, then I will greatly appreciate any like on this video although likes don't matter so you can also dislike this video because that's cool too um and if you can just make sure to subscribe um it really helps me i really enjoy your guys' support um a lot i i really do and it makes me so happy every time i even just see one extra person subscribed i always look through my subscriber list i am definitely obsessive over it but i love it and so if you can subscribe, that would be super cool. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Let's get into the actual video now. Okay, so last time we left off on slash game rule, um, we are now going to be moving on to slash game mode and shortcuts. So we can just start with slash game mode. If you type slash game mode in chat, um, obviously you're going to get these four uh, game modes. These are the only four game modes that exist. Um, adventure mode, creative, spectator, and survival. Uh, you're probably familiar with creative and survival mode, but you may not have heard of adventure or spectator. Uh, both of these are modes that you've probably played on before, but just didn't know what they were called. So creative mode, uh, that's the mode I'm in right now. Then you have game mode survival, um, which is like normal Minecraft survival. Uh, you can break things, you can punch leaves, you can take damage. I mean, it's, it's just survival mode. Everyone knows what that one is. But then adventure and spectator, um, are really different. Spectator is like creative, except you can't actually do anything in it. You can just fly around. So if you're in spectator mode, you can fly around and you're actually always stuck with flying. If you double press space, you'll just go up a few times. I mean, there's nothing special about it. But if you go into something, you can you can actually go into the ground. It's really useful for like going through buildings or like you don't want to break something. So instead you just go into spectator and then back into creative or I guess survival right now. Um, the last game mode is game mode adventure. And this one is interesting because it's like survival. Um, you can, you, I mean, you can take damage, you can punch mobs, you can open chests. 
you can eat food, you can do all of the stuff you do in survival, except for break and place blocks. Um, and the reason for this is because it's really for, like, puzzle maps and adventure maps and that kind of stuff, where, like, Say you want a player to be able to explore an environment and interact with things, but in a controlled way. So you don't want them to be able to go outside of, say, this fence. So I'm not able to break this fence right now. I am, you can hear me, pressing down on my left mouse button, but it, it just doesn't work. And same with the right click. It's really useful uh, when you're making a map, and this is the default game mode that someone will be in when they actually start playing the map. So you're not going to use it when you're making a map, for instance, but you will definitely be using this in probably most, if not all of your maps. But if I go back to creative mode, there's some actually really handy shortcuts which you can use to get between all of these different modes really quickly. Uh, so the one I use really often is if you press F3 and the N key on your keyboard, you'll get switched between the game mode that you're in and spectator mode. So for instance, if I'm in survival mode, um, you can see that it said survival mode, and if I press F3 and N, it'll go to spectator mode. Then if I press F3 and N again, it'll go back to survival mode because that's the game mode that I was in. The other one that's really useful and allows you to switch between all game modes is F3 and F4 combined. Hold F3 and tap F4, and then you'll get to this menu where you can take your mouse button, just your normal mouse, I don't know why I said button. You can take your mouse and hover over any of these game modes, and then just put your mouse over it, and then let go of the F3 key, and then it'll place you in the mode that you chose. So this is like, if you wanted to switch between creative and spectator, you should just use F3 and N, but if you want to switch to survival from creative mode, then you can do that using F3 and F4. Um, and it's, I mean, it's really useful. So I use this all the time. I mean, I'm just using it like randomly right now. It might take a sec to get used to all of those hotkeys, but um, it's really useful. The next command we'll be focusing on is slash teleport. I use this like pretty much in every map and um, usually I use it to teleport someone from the lobby of a map to the actual game or from even just place to place or there's these cool seamless um, teleportation things that you can do where if you look for where someone is and then um, you can teleport them back to another location so that it looks like they're walking through an endless hallway or something. I use that all the time. Super fun. Um, and teleport, I use it all the time. You can do slash teleport. Uh, or if you want to like make that shorter, you can also do slash TP. Um, you can see you have slash teleport in up here and slash TP down here. They're the same command, one's just shorter. Um, but you want to... So this is this is where it gets a little tricky because now you can see there's actually selectors. Uh, so this is, this is kind of advanced. Uh, we'll get into selectors later, but we'll keep it really basic for right now. Uh, so if you hover over all of these different options, you can actually see what all of these mean. Um, but for right now, we'll just be doing slash TP at P, and this command will execute from the player that it uh, that enters it. So right now, it basically reads as slash teleport yourself. You could also type your name, um, but at P is just always the player, um, and it it stands for nearest player. Um, but yeah. So for instance, let's say I want to make it from this gold uh, pad to this diamond platform. Um, and I don't want to have to fly between there every time, and I want to have a command that is just at my ready. So I can fly over to this diamond platform and press F3, and over here you'll see that there are um, coordinates for where you are. Uh, it'll say block, and then um, 
just integers. Uh, and those are your coordinates. If you look at X, Y, Z, those are your exact coordinates on these blocks. So as you can see, I'm not like directly in the center of a block. I'm kind of just randomly placed. These are my coordinates for where I am on that block to the actually nearest thousandths place. Uh, so it's like extremely precise. You are not going to get anything more exact than those decimal points. You can also look at a block and over here it'll say targeted block or targeted fluid. If you have water then it'll show you which block of water you're looking at. Uh, there's also targeted block and it points to which block you're looking at. So over here it says negative 4, 38, 62, and 56. And um, block is the block that I'm actually at. So that's just the air block that I'm in right now, which is one block higher than the targeted block that I'm looking at. Um, so if I do F3 and then start typing my slash teleport command. So I do slash teleport at P and then the coordinates where I am. So we got them from right up here, 438, 63, and 56 all with spaces because these are separate coordinates this uh the first one is known as the x coordinate the second one is known as the y coordinate which is up and down and the z coordinate is side to side um then we can actually press enter and we're now at that block and say i mean we don't really need this gold platform we can use that command that we just used from anywhere but say we're at this platform and we don't want to fly over there, you can do slash. And then if you press the up arrow on your keyboard, it will show the last thing you said in chat. Um, and you can actually keep doing that and it'll go through your entire chat command and um, text history. So I can press slash and then just up and then I will be able to have this command at the ready and I can press enter and arrive at these diamond blocks anywhere and anytime. After learning slash teleport, we are now moving on to the last command part of this video, which is slash fill, um, the more advanced stuff. Let's say I wanna make a platform to show all of my fill commands on. Uh, let's let's say i want to make i don't know i want to make a platform this big so i'm gonna fill it how we did before uh i want it to be diamond blocks okay so i've got my platform but now i want to build i don't know just some random statue okay so i've got my statue built uh it's it's awful i didn't try um so, let's say I want to change all of these stone blocks to cobblestone, just so that it gives it a more rocky feel. There's actually a command that'll speed this up for you, um, and it is slash fill replace. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to take your selection, um, you know how to take a selection, so I want to go from corner to corner of my build and select all of the coordinates. And then I want to um, do the block that I, I want to do the I want to oh my. then I want to type the block that will be the block I want it to be. So I want this stone to be cobblestone. So I'm going to type cobblestone. So right now this would just fill this command right here would just fill the entire thing with cobblestone it wouldn't fill just the stone it would go from this corner to this corner and make it a just rectangle of cobblestone i don't want that so i'm going to do slash fill all of that and then add replace at the end and i'm going to type the block that i want to replace so i want to replace stone um because that is the block that the majority of it is made up of and i want to make it so that all of the stone is cobblestone and then if I press enter on that, you can see immediately it makes it so that all of this is cobblestone. So this is super useful when you want to, I don't know, you want to take all of a grass in a field and change it into ferns or something. Another important one is slash fill keep. 
Um, so this one is similar, except say I wanted to do... I don't know. I want this to exist. I want my high to stay here. But I want to make it so that all of the air between these blocks is gold. I want it to be gold. Um, so I need to, once again, select the area of my build. So from corner to corner. And then I want to type gold block. But then I want to type keep. And if I press enter, that will actually keep all of the current blocks. So it'll keep every block that is part of the build and only replace air. Um, so gold blocks are only going to be replacing all of the air blocks in this selection. If I did that again, but I did a uh, diamond block keep, nothing would change because there's no air in this selection. So that one's pretty useful. I don't really use this that much, but um, when you need something like this, you'll know what to do. It's really simple and it works. The next one is slash fill destroy. This one's fun because it makes it so that all of the blocks drop themselves. So I've selected the build, but if I want to make it so that it's air and I destroy all of the blocks that are there, it'll actually break them with an animation and then drop all of the blocks. So this one's really fun in like survival maps and adventure maps and you want them to like get the blocks after you can actually make it so it breaks all of the blocks and drops them as entities and items uh you definitely don't want to do this if you have a huge area because it will probably crash your game and your computer and those are the same thing but yeah and then the last ones are slash fill outline and slash fill hollow so i'm gonna build another statue don't make fun of me i know my statue is a cube it's good, and I'm proud of it. Let's say I want to make a border around my statue, um, but I want it to keep the statue on the inside. I want the statue to stay on the inside, but I want to make a box around my statue for whatever reason, just so I can keep it protected from players who hate my statue. Um, I don't know why anyone would, because it's great. But... What you want to do is take the outline of the box that you'd want to create. So let's say I want the box to be this big with one block of air surrounding the, my um, statue on all sides. So I want to select the region for the box. Um, and then I want to choose the block that I want the box to be. So uh, let's say I want it to be dirt. Uh, that'll keep it really safe. Then I could type dirt outline. Um, and then it would actually... So, n I mean, now it just looks like there's a box um, and it's made out of dirt. But if I break out the inside, you can see that it's hollow on the inside and there is actually a block, uh, my, my whole statue is still on the inside, so thank god it's still safe. Let's say I wanted to do the same thing, except I wanted to remove my statue. I could do, instead of outline, I could do hollow, and what this would do is so that when I break out the box, all of my statue is gone, and now I'm really sad, but at least my command worked, right? So that is it guys for this tutorial and um, that was a lot of stuff. I know uh, it'll give you a lot to practice and a lot to work with. You can have a ton of fun with this stuff. I'm actually going to get into command blocks really soon. There's so much stuff that we covered and a lot more to get into because coding, I mean, there's a lot to it and I could go really fast through it, but I want to get really into depth with it just so that you guys really get it and can use it however you want. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Please dislike this video or like it if you want because both are pretty cool. 
uh, and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy this is <laughs> this is this. yes if you enjoy this series or any of my content uh, thanks so much and peace out <laughs>